Hello there and welcome back to my channel. I thought it might be quite a nice idea to start work on a new playlist here on my YouTube channel in which I answer FAQs or frequently asked questions and I got the idea really as a result of doing last week's video in which I basically go through the reasons as to why I don't accept custom Etsy orders and I think it's actually quite an interesting video and certainly relatable I'd imagine for a lot of artists out there so I'll link that below if you've not seen it so you can go in and check that out after this one. So I thought today the second question I'd answer is uh, basically why is my polymer clay so hard and uh, why can't I use it? Why isn't it pliable? You know all those uh, variations of that one question really and uh, yeah I thought I'd go through what I do in order to make uh, hard clay basically uh, soft again really. Um, you know there's always a way to, to make the material kind of workable again it's just that uh, invariably you have to put in a little bit of effort really. I'd also recommend that you have a pasta machine and uh, this is something that you should really be looking into ideally if you consider polymer clay to be um, a hobby that certainly takes up a few hours of your week um, really because it will help out your hands uh, no end really when I first started with polymer clay I just thought oh, I don't need a pasta machine why on earth do I need one of those I'll just use my hands or you know bash it around a bit with my hands and uh, it should be fine but um, actually that's not really the case my first experience of really hard polymer clay was super sculpy and I had no idea how to use the material when I first ordered it I, I just thought it'd be a case of you know just open the packet and go but um, basically it was a, just a hard block it was like a brick when it uh, first arrived and I just couldn't fathom how to use it I just thought I'd received a duff one and um, I ended up throwing it in the bin because um, it was just hurting my hands too much it was impossible to, to make pliable just just with my hands really but I didn't know then that basically you need a pasta machine in order to make hard clay pliable there are two kinds of hard clay actually and um, the first is you know when it arrives just like a brick and the second is when it's hard and crumbly and um, gosh that can be a real pain to try and manage so I thought what I'd do is just pop over to my clay desk and uh, yeah I'll take you through what I do in order to make hard and crumbly clay workable again because you know it is possible. So I'm over at my clay desk now and I've got some yellow clay here that's uh, yeah really crumbly as you'll see it's um, yeah really quite difficult to work with so I'm just gonna use my blaze cutting tool here and um, just take off some sections really it's quite tough which is no surprise so um, I'll just work with this section here put the others back so what I tend to do with um, with clay that's you know crumbly and old is that I'll try and break it firstly into a few pieces and if it won't break like that um, you can use your um, cutting tool to cut it down further basically as you'll see it isn't actually as crumbly as it could be um, because it's absolutely boiling in the studio today so this isn't the worst state that it's been in just to offer some transparency but it's still really tough and you certainly couldn't just start moulding it with your hands so just try and start bringing those all together really and this bit is always a nightmare because your hands as you'll see will just get covered in, in polymer clay so be prepared to use some wet wipes and uh, you'll certainly need to wash your hands afterwards. I don't know actually when I think about it if you can hear any birds cheeping in the, <laughs> in the background but we seem to have some, um, I think they're blue tits that have 
seemingly quite like our roof for some reason. I don't know whether they're nesting there at the moment, but we're just going to leave them to it. You know, if they have created a nest in, in the roof or in the gutter, it's all such like we'll deal with that after ne nesting season. But uh, yeah, just to let you know, if you hear some chirping, that's what's going on. We've not just suddenly got a pet spurs. So you'll see this is really difficult, isn't it? It's really hard. It's not coming together very easily. So what is often pretty useful is Sculpey Clay Softener here. And this is, um, I think, a real bargain because this, this bottle here is years old because you need the tiniest, tiniest amounts. So you can just pop that onto your clay like so. And uh, just try and start working it into the clay. It's a nightmare that I've picked yellow clay actually because of the pigment. <laughs> really comes off onto your hands. But you know, I wanted to go with the, the clay that's the toughest in my polymer clay box. So you might find that's a little easier to come together, but obviously it's still still a bit hard. So I'm just cleaning things down actually because that was getting a bit ridiculous. Um, <laughs> everything was yellow. Um, so I'm going to give you another tip here um, because that's still not coming together sort of terribly easy. Um, if you've another colour of polymer clay around that's soft, like for instance this uh, this white clay here is really flexible um, and you're not too fussed about sort of changing the colour ever so slightly maybe and um, certainly with yellow because there's so much pigment in it it doesn't really matter if you add in some white because it's still going to be really yellowy so I'm just going to add some white to it and uh, now I can just try and start working that together And you might find that just using an acrylic roller will help. And it's certainly starting to feel a bit more like clay now. And I think that's the combination of the clay softener and the, the white clay too. So yeah, that's certainly a lot better. So I'm just going to squeeze that down a little further with my acrylic roller and I'm going to take it over to my pasta roller. So I don't know how well you can see there because I've not really filmed from this angle before because it's uh, quite difficult to get to in the studio, this little area. So I'm just going to start popping that through. It is a little tough but should get easier and this is basically what you need if you've got um, issues with tough clay sorry this angle is really awkward isn't it but I'm sure you get the idea maybe I'll start doing it with this hand now so there we go that's starting to come together really nicely and again, it's a shame I didn't do this one in the winter because the clay is um, even tougher <laughs> at that time, really because it's so cold. But uh, yeah, you'll see here, the clay is starting to be actual usable polymer clay. It's really pliable now. And I'm happy with the colour. You see that the... Um, the pigment is still really strong actually. Fimo does some really good pigmentation in its uh, clay, but particularly yellow, it's uh, really vibrant. And I don't think you can tell actually, that's very much different from the original colour. So there we go. Really pliable, really usable, soft polymer clay.
I hope you found that useful and I'd be really interested to hear your tips about how you make hard clay usable. Again, you know, I'm fully aware that YouTube is a community, so I'm not the only polymer clay artist out there. So I'd be really interested to, to hear your tips and uh, yeah, leave those down below. And I'm sure that we can all learn together really. So uh, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing those. I'd also be interested to hear what questions you'd like answered as well either about polymer clay or about uh, my artwork in general or my life as a artist or illustrator so yeah by all means leave those down below as well and uh, I think that's it for today thanks for watching give it a like if you liked it and uh, yeah I'll see you again soon take care bye